All right, let's make a few maps and let's look at what reports we can create. If our project is in a certain area, we need some information about planning um, for the architect. He'll need to know about the wind zones for um, building design and we'll need to know what our zoning is. So I'm going to click on planning report to see what's available. So I want this parcel here. I'm going to put it on pause while this runs. I don't know how long it's going to take. All right, it took longer than I thought. So now the report has run. So I'm going to click on planning and see what comes up. So what it is, is our site information, parcel ID, where it's located, who's the commissioner in the district, the, town, the section township and range, um, what land use is, low, low density residential, the zoning is listed as RSTD R1. The old zoning was R1. So R1 is limited to a maximum of 10 lots with a single family detached dwelling, um, plus eight new restrictions. The provider is Apopka, um, urban service area, and if there's a bombing range. It's within a, the Wakaiva study area. And the code enforcement officer is J Ortiz. This is really important information when you start designing a subdivision. So you're de designing and laying out the subdivision based on a specific code. So let's go ahead and save that and save it to your project file. I'm gonna create a folder in my documents and FAU subdivision project data. I don't type very well, so spelling, forgive me. Okay. And then I'm going to save it here. There. <laughs> okay. Now, the next thing that is available to me, and I'm going to close that, is the wind report and the zoning report. So I'll click on those. So the wind report says, running, hopefully this will be faster. I'm gonna pause until it, oh, there it is. And say, I'll pause so y'all don't have to sit and wait with me. Okay, so the, zone, the wind report has the information, so it's different categories. So if you were a builder, you would have to build based on that. Close, I'm not gonna save the wind report um, sometimes it is required to put on your plans what wind zone you are in, um, but that's only usually if we're in a we're submitting our plans with a um, a builder or an architect. So I'm going to click on the zoning report and let's see what we've got. So I'm going to click on the zoning report. <clears throat> Same information, LDR, same information, um, what boundary we're in, protection. So it doesn't give us any different information than the planning report. So the planning report is all we really need for this one because it gives us the most information that we'll be using for our design. So I'm going to go ahead and close those out. I'm not saving that either. Close those out. Now, escape out of that. Now I want to make some maps. So I'm going to X out of this if it's still open um, and go back to my um, maps. So I'm going to go, I was in reports, now I'm going to go to markup. So in markup, you have the option of putting text, line, freehand drawing, etc. I'm going to click on rectangle. Next, I'm going to click on styles. Now, I want to choose only, you can do transparent fill, solid fill, or outline. I'm just going to use an outline, and I'm going to use a red. And then it says click and drag the rectangle over the map. So I'm going to click that. And now I have the outline of my project area. Now I want to go in and I want to write some text. That text, I'm going to use this style here. 
and then it says click on the location where you want to add text to the map. So I'm going to click below it and I'm going to say project area. I had this piece of text already typed in here. So my project area. So um, if you said you, let, let's delete that. Let's say you made a mistake. I'm going to click that X out. If I wanted to erase something, I could click on it and erase it. Um, now I want to click on the text again. Whoops. Click on the location where you want to put the text. I'm going to go into styles. So if I didn't have any text written in here, I could click on a point and then it'll this will pop up. So I want project area. The last time I did this, um, this wasn't the style uh, how it was set up. In all honesty, cancel. Um, a few years ago was the last time I used Orange County's uh, markup information, and it was a little easier to use than this is now. Now you also have the do option to export a drawing into a shape file. Shape files can be imported into uh, Civil 3D, and they can also be used in GIS, ArcGIS, or QGIS. Now <clears throat> I want to go ahead and create my map. To create the map, also notice that your text. Um, is uh, scales up once you scale up. If I keep scrolling in, depending on how I scroll, the text changes. Now I want to, I'm going to close that out, pan that up a little bit. I'm going to move that here. I want to get a pretty good area for my, my map. Now to create the map, you're going to have to go to tasks tasks and I'm going to print. So now the shaded area is where I want to print. If I unlock this, then I can move this however I want. I could possibly bring it further down, move it up, however, whatever is shaded in red. I can also change the scale to 4000, but notice I lose my text on Votal Road, so I'm actually going to change that back to 8000. Gives me a nice um, visual. Now my project name, so I'm going to go, uh, I'm going to say generic. You're all going to have to come up with a design project name sooner or later, but I'm not really good with names. Uh, I'm going to call it project design. Told you I can't spell sitemap. All right. You can also change the resolution. I'm just going to do 150. Um, you can put longitude and latitude lines in, or you can put map units. I'm going to go ahead and leave it as map units, and then print. Once you get that, you're going to open up the file, and then you're going to save the file into your folder for your project. Now, I don't know if this is the project area that I'm going to select for our project, or if I'm going to have you all do a different project. So now you have a nice little map that you can add to it. You can also export this. I'm going to go ahead and save this. Save this in. And since I already started that, so I'm going to call it my site map. All of these maps that you're creating is what your homework is going to be. Now you can also export the data as an image that you could bring into your, your CAD files. You can share it and you can upload the data, um, add layers from your computer. Okay, so now I'm going to cancel out of that. Now I'm going to leave the project area high like that. I'm going to turn on the aerial imagery. Give it a second. Everything seems to be moving slow for me today. thinking now I want to create a map of the project area again so I don't I'm gonna click on the text and I'm going to change the styles so I can see it better actually I like that all right move that over a little bit <clears throat> All right, now the reason is that I lose the aerial is probably because of the scale factor. Let's see, there we go. Let's go ahead and do a print. 
I am going to change the scale to 8,000. I'm going to keep it at the 8,000 range so we can see visually. Now, I don't know, actually, it won't give me my aerial at 8,000. So I'm going to uncheck this, and I want to bring in the roadway. Unfortunately, the name of the street isn't popping up, but I'm not going to worry about that right now. So I'm going to call it Aerial Map. All right, and I'm going to print. Open the file. And I am going to save that. And I'm going to call it my aerial map. Now on your homework, you'll want zoning, um, a soils map, your wetland information, land use map, a floodplain map, and the aerial. So we've got the aerial done. So let's look at our zoning. So let's go back and get out of that. So in the zoning, we have zoning information. So we're going to click on our zoning. I'm going to unclick the aerial. And I'm going to come down here. I'm going to see if it allows me. Let's go back. Whoops. Click through that. I am going to. And again, forgive me, I'm not as familiar with uh, Orange County. I want the lot lines. Where did I see the lot lines? Property. I want to show the parcels on here. I don't want the dimensions. I want the parcel outlines. There, that's what I want. I just had to zoom back in. So I want all this information on my zoning map, okay? So I turned on the parcel data. I'm not gonna put on parcel labels or the dimensions. Um, just making sure the labels aren't what I want. Yeah, I'm gonna uncheck the labels. I liked how this looks better. And now I'm going to go back to um, I'm going to change that text again. I'm going to change that style back to to black. Um, I'm going to do medium. Now I'm going to go to tasks and I'm going to close out of that and I'm going to print. Now you can change the scale to an 11 by 17 if you want. That looks kind of nice. Um, and we're going to change the title and I'm going to leave it to one to four thousand. I'm going to change the title to design project zoning map. And then I am going to print. Open file. Now you'll be able to see what zone zoning map, what the zone is that we're around. And you can see that the we've got rural farmland around us. We've got R R-1. We've got R-1 down here. We've got a baby blue is restricted, uh, is just a residential district, R2s. So now I'm going to come down here and I'm going to save this map. And this is my zoning map. Now, usually this information um, is provided to us by the planners, but sometimes uh, 
we as engineers and surveyors have to collect this data to uh, start a project. Mostly engineers need the zoning more than the surveyors. Okay, let's go back to our map. And I said that we wanted for our homework was a uh, soils map. So I'm going to leave the parcels on. I am going to uncheck the zoning. Um, and there should be environmental in the soils. Now, as engineers, again, we need the soils information, the soil types. Okay, so it depends on what we're building. I am going to uncheck underneath the property. I don't need all the lot numbers and all that. So under property, I'm going to uncheck that. Now I'm going to print this map. Go out a little bit. I don't care that it's that far out. Um, I'm going to go 2,000. And I'm going to do portrait. Oh, it won't let me do portrait. Hm. Just landscape. All right. And I'm going to call it my soils map. You can also get the soils map off the USGS website. And I'll probably show you that later on in the semester. All right, so you can see what soils we have out here. Oddly enough, it's not listing the soils. It's just giving you the street names. How odd is that? I guess you'll be looking up the soils map. Let me see. Let's go ahead and save this. And we'll call it the soils map. Now, even though it doesn't say what the soils is, you can see what the soil types are here. They're six and 47. So you will have to go to the, N the NRCS maps to get that. So I'm gonna cl start closing some of this so my browser doesn't have issues. These are all the the maps that we've created. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and close that. Now, we had talked about the floodplain, so I am going to turn off the soils. <clears throat> we also talked uh, a requirement is the future land use. So, so you'll create a map for that. I'm not going to go through all the maps. I'm just showing you how to create maps right now. However, I do want to show you the information for the survey because that is, I want all the survey information on there. Any available information. And I'm going to make a map of this. I would like to see if there was any way that I could add. Here's the thing is, the data that I would like to see on the, the, the survey information isn't going to be um, a map because I don't think it'll ID it. Let me click on benchmark data. I'm going to click on one over, actually, I'm going to click on this one and this one. I'm having issues. There we go. All right. I want to see if there's any additional information that I can get. Because typically we get our benchmark information not from here, but from um, the NGS data source. All right, I'm going to take a look to see what would print with this. This might not work. I've not tried this before, so just bear with me. So 
print. Let's see what it pops up with. It does say that it's a benchmark, but it doesn't give you any type of information on that. I'm going to go ahead and save this. Um, but as we go through the semester, like I said, I'll show you how, if you don't already know, how to get the benchmark data location map. All right. Now, what other information did we say we needed? I'm going to close out of that. I'm going to go close out of that. I'm going to turn this survey information off. And the last thing I'm just going to show you real quick is the close that should be underneath environmental. That's the wetlands. Water Management District. I'm looking for the floodplain. Okay, and let's try water. So I want my flood zones and I want my drainage basins. And I'm going to create a print of that. Now I am going to unlock that and I'm going to move it here. All right, and I'm going to call it Floodplain map, and I'm going to print. Open the file. And I'm going to print it. All right, I'm going to go ahead and stop here. You all finish up with the remaining maps that you're needing to make. And if you have any questions, just let me know.